Upon the U.S. Navy today rests a responsibility greater and heavier than any Navy in history has ever been called upon to discharge. For its ships and planes must patrol and protect not only the Western Hemisphere's continental coastlines and island bases in two oceans, but they must keep open the endless lines of communication and supply which connect the U.S. with Allied outposts on four continents. Never before in the annals of war have naval forces been obliged to operate over such staggering distances. To do the job demanded of it, until new fleet units now building can be put into service, necessitates the fullest and most effective use of every available ship of the hundreds already on the Navy list. From its own operating bases in the Western Hemisphere, and from new bases now being established overseas, units of the fleet are playing their indispensable part in the war. Today, among officers and blue jackets everywhere, morale is high. Men know their jobs and know their ships. For in the years before war, the Navy's growing personnel carrying out an exacting schedule of tactical and gunnery exercises, had been developing a high degree of skill and efficiency, while the Navy itself was rapidly expanding. Each new ship joining the fleet took its place with the others of its class to fill particular needs and perform specific missions. And in support of its ships at sea, the Navy was building upon shore a vast and widespread organization of supply and repair. For without access to sources of fuel and ammunition, a man of war is of little use. Today, workmen and naval personnel at yards and bases all over the world share the responsibility of keeping the ships of the US and Allied fleets at a peak of readiness and effectiveness. As a matter of routine before combatant ships put to sea, their magazines and storerooms are loaded to capacity, and their fuel and freshwater tanks topped off almost to overflowing. Every time a naval vessel puts into a base, full advantage must be taken of every minute of its stay to make needed repairs and take aboard general stores. For every ship of the line is a fighting machine, which, like any other mechanism, must have continuous care and service. But for the vast distances naval vessels must cover in today's war, Supply is a grave problem. To extend the fleet's range of operations beyond reach of its bases is the job of the Navy's lesser known ships, the faithful and invaluable ships of the train. These auxiliaries, tankers and beef boats, transports and ammunition carriers, hospital ships and repair vessels, form the Navy's mobile and seagoing supply bases. With the enemy temporarily in control of most of the sources of petroleum in the Far East, all the enormous requirements of the armed forces operating in the Southwest Pacific must be met by tankers, traveling over thousands of miles of dangerous sea routes. The Navy's tenders, mother ships for submarines, destroyers, and seaplanes are invaluable in today's war of great distances. Of major importance are the seaplane tenders, which enable patrol bombers to double their effective range. Making full use of the facilities of nearby yards and bases are scores of miscellaneous naval craft, all with special jobs like minesweepers. The odd-shaped net tender, whose job it is to open and close the gates of anti-submarine nets. At naval bases, one sees scores of patrol vessels, some of them Coast Guard cutters, others converted pleasure craft, and some especially built for combat, like the spectacular PT boats, fast, light torpedo carriers.
But all the ships and bases of the Navy merely augment and support the battle line. Still the measure of a nation's sea power. Most formidable engine of death and destruction in existence, the battleship is designed and built to deliver maximum gun power anywhere at any time. On battleships, all fire and ship control areas, turret guns and magazines are encased in a protective shell of thick armor plate. In addition to the main battery of large caliber guns and the secondary batteries, battleships have dual purpose guns for defense against aircraft and light surface attacks. Today, every battleship has a complement of planes which are used to scout, to observe and spot gunfire, and if need be, to attack submarines and small torpedo craft. Battleships bear the names of the states of the Union. Each ship a vast seagoing community with a population numbering over 1,400 officers and men. The battleship alone, properly screened and with support in the air, can carry continued and concentrated destruction to the enemy on his own ground. Second in importance to battleships are cruisers. Those with guns greater than six inches are heavy cruisers. Those with guns six inches or less are light cruisers. They have a crew of about 700 officers and men. In the square sterns of modern cruisers is a hangar for scout and observation planes. Cruisers are heavily armed, but lightly armored. Their principal characteristic is speed, combined with tremendous gun power. The cruiser, whether light or heavy, has a speed of over 32 knots. Its engines can develop the horsepower of a modern battleship, and its enormous fuel capacity enables it to engage in extreme long-range operations. Cruisers are named for American cities, like New Orleans and Nashville, Milwaukee and Marblehead, Pensacola and Portland. When with the fleet, they act as protective screening force for battleships. Together with planes, they are the eyes of the fleet, its scouting force. Divisions of cruisers are ideal for hit and run attacks.